Cousin saya ni uh, telah juga hamboya ketika dia mandi waktu malam. My cousin was attacked by a crocodile while he was taking his bath at night. In the dark, a crocodile suddenly attacked him. He was in a panic and did not expect that to happen. He could only hang on to a wooden beam of the jetty while trying to fight off the crocodile. He survived by poking the crocodile's eyes to make it release him. Unfortunately, he lost a kilogram of flesh from his thigh. Finally, he ran to the edge of the river. At the same time, neighbors came to my cousin's help. He was safe and alive. He now lives his life normally after several treatment sessions in Miri Hospital. Can I ask, first of all, why do people still live with crocodiles in this region when they know the dangers? The issue of living with crocodile here is not by design, but by default. It's because uh, the environment here, especially the rivers, uh, where the crocodile occurs naturally, and it's also a suitable place where human uh, habitations are, as well as where people go and look for food and uh, uh, do their economic uh, activities like fishing, washing, transport. Uh, Sarawak is blessed with many, many rivers. At one time, we are even called the land of many rivers. And because rivers are very good habitat for crocodile, so <clears throat> in a way, human living along the river river areas have to live with the crocodile. So it's by default that human and crocodile live together. That's a, a, an interesting idea, of course, and, and uh, both sharing the same habitat mm -hmm. and using it for food and for transport and uh, for washing. work, washing everything. Yeah. But <clears throat> you're a member of the Bidayu yeah. tribe and you could have killed every crocodile nearby, but you don't choose to do that. What, what, why, is, why is that? Um, a lot of the natives communities in Sarawak or Borneo, for example, they do believe in certain ways of human wildlife or human animal the, uh, interactions. One of the things that uh, happen with big dangerous animals like crocodiles is that people believe that if you don't disturb the crocodile, the crocodile don't disturb you. The Bidayah community, long, long time ago, <coughs> when human, when the belief was that human and crocodile speak, or human and animal can still communicate with each other, a crocodile was found on the side of the river with the bone stuck to the trot. And uh, people passed by, the crocodile asked for help, people didn't help. The Bidayah ancestors managed to help the crocodile. So the folklore story goes that because of that, the crocodile was so, um, uh, what you call it, as so happy with the assistant given, so grateful, so grateful <clears throat> he decided to bring the Bidayah ancestors to see the king of the crocodile. And during that session, the king of the crocodile said, we will reward you for your help. But the Bidayah said, I don't need your reward. And uh, they both think that they should be rewarded so that there is no more deal after that. The Bidayah decided that, okay, you can reward me. You put inside my basket. But the basket had a hole at the bottom. So everything that the crocodile decided to reward will not fill out the basket. And decided that, okay, we are not going to reward you. Um, <clears throat> and we will make a promise here that until generation come, crocodile will not harm the Bidayah. And there was a, a little uh, word that uh, when I was young, that was taught 
to us as a young boy. Maybe if you happen to cross a river where the crocodile is, you may have to utter a few words that says, for example, Tang sumbuk mu ni dodang bubus. It means your grand great grandparents owe us one uh, basket of reward which never get filled. <laughs> so those are the belief, and 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 the the biggest thing that uh, crocodile will not harm them. Uh, not that I believe in that, but I do sometimes think that it's a good way of looking at living with animal, uh, because the thing is that it says if you don't disturb the crocodile, the crocodile will not disturb you. So the the fact of the case is that you know if that place is with crocodile, you have respect for the area, you have respect for the crocodile. So you live in harmony with the crocodile by doing things that will not offend the crocodile, and in doing so. Crocodile will not have the opportunity to sort of cross each other's path where uh, one species may get injured. What happens when you receive a call and uh, there's been an incident? Can you take, take us through what you do and how you respond? Yes. Um, in the wildlife management, we have already set aside, we have already put in place a standard operating procedure of how we handle crocodile attacks and also handling crocodile that people see or report as dangerous. In the case of crocodile attack, our SWAT, SWAT, this is Chief Wildlife Action Team, which we have established. These are the people who are trained to handle the dangerous animal like crocodile or even animal like macaque who, who become a problem in certain village and things. They would uh, establish with the other agencies, what we call it as a temporary operating center. And from there on, uh, they will do two things. One of it is to try and do search and rescue. Uh, probably the person is lost or not dead yet, or otherwise, uh, if it is known to be killed, then search and, search and uh, recover, plus search and destroy of the dangerous crocodile. So, <clears throat> Working with other agencies, the police who had guns and uh, the district office and also the local communities who had the sentiment uh, over the death of the relatives and things like that. Um, if we do recover the body, what we will try to do within the next 10 days is to try to establish uh, the location where the attack as well as where the body is discovered. Because out of that, it is the uh, best way, in fact, to try to get the culprit crocodile. Crocodiles are animals that are also uh, territorial. Normally, the big male will patrol his own sort of uh, river, maybe between two to three kilometers. It's his home range. So uh, he may have a number of other adult crocodiles there, but if the attack happens in that area and if we operate within those areas, the boss the best chance of getting the culprit crocodile is in fact by doing that. Remove the body, place back a bed, and crocodile normally would guard his food for some time. Uh, if he took a bed, it is the uh, indication that it could be the culprit crocodile. Most of the time, this crocodile will be destroyed uh, humanly by shooting at it, or otherwise hit it hard onto the head. So that it die, and uh, one of the things that the community would want us to do is to try to see whether there is any human body parts in the tamak. Uh, we did some of it. We remove human body part, the big bone. But crocodile scientists believe that after ten days or more, the big bone would also have been digested. So you may not find evidence. You may find evidence of hair or clothing. And if we do that, then we can say, okay, your case is closed. We have already removed the crocodile that uh, attack the individual. So we're now drifting downriver back to Baku village, which is only about two minutes swimming time for a crocodile away from where the traps have just been set. Problem crocs in this area uh, are dealt with as all crocs are, uh, by the forestry department.
Baku village, as you can see in the pictures um, behind me, in the scene behind me, is on the water's edge. There is very little to stop crocodiles from moving up the riverbank into areas where people live, yet there is surprisingly little conflict. The areas for the crocodile and the areas for humans are pretty well defined here and trouble isn't a daily occurrence. However, even in this paradise, conflict does sometimes occur. The perennial problem of people overestimating the safety of swimming in the water and using it um, for their daily needs and forgetting the power and the presence of the crocodiles in this region always going to be an issue.